Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. He's the judge, jury, and executioner packed into one, who delivers instant justice in a dystopian future. Yeah, we're talking about Judge Dredd, the most unlikely anti-hero that you'd expect as a protagonist. Ever since his first appearance in comic books back in 1977, the character has been one of the longest-running features, and with a couple of movie and video game adaptations, the popularity has always been on the rise. In this video, we'll bring you the entire life of Judge Dredd covered across numerous story arcs over the years, both in comic books and movies. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Judge Dredd and what does his world look like? Judge Dredd, aka Joseph Dredd, is one of the several street judges who work as the law enforcement agency in Mega City One. In a dystopian world, civilization is largely restricted within this metropolis, which covers a large area and houses millions of people. However, crime is also at an all-time high, which makes it necessary for someone like Judge Dredd to be empowered with the ability to convict, sentence, and even execute the criminals instantly. The comic book appearances of Judge Dredd hardly ever show his face, and it's covered under a helmet. It's been purposely done in order to highlight the facelessness of justice. The comic is also very particular about the timeline of the Judge Dredd universe, and one year in the real world amounts to a year gone by in this dystopian future as well. The narrative starts off in the year 2099, and recent story arcs are set in 2046, which is exactly 47 years since 1977 in the real world. The setting of the dystopian future is on the aftermath of disastrous international conflicts that have reduced a majority of the planet into a radioactive wasteland. There are several Mega cities across the world, and Judge Dredd's stories are largely focused around Mega City One, which is on the east coast of North America. A major reason behind rising crime rates within Mega City One is the advancement of automation and robots, which has left a large section of the population unemployed. There are several towers in the city known as City Blocks, and they're capable of housing around 50,000 people. Mega City One is governed by the judges, who can be classified into two groups the street judges, who patrol the city, and the administrative judges. There's a chief judge who commands the rest, and a council of judges decides on important matters. They form some kind of an authoritarian rule, and the judges are also the government, where the common citizens have no right to participate or interfere. Exploring the origins and backstory of Judge Dredd. Before we dive into the exciting storylines featuring Judge Dredd, it's time for a quick history lesson to figure out his real origins. Joseph Dredd and his brother Rico Dredd were cloned by a genetic scientist named Morton Judd. They were cloned from the DNA of a righteous chief judge named Fargo, who was presumed to have died in the line of duty. Both Joseph and Rico were given accelerated growth artificially, and even as kids they had a part of the knowledge and training required for the job. This cloning process was done in the year 2066, and four years later, Later, a corrupt president led the world in World War III. The atomic wars brought in chaos and destruction, and the judges had to step in to restore order among the public. Under this emergency, both Joseph and Rico were drafted in as full judges, even though they were merely cadets at this stage. Even as kids, they proved their credentials and made their first kill when they prevented a gang rape. They also find out that Judge Fargo is still alive, and this father figure tells the brothers about his doubts on the justice system and his concerns regarding life and liberty being taken away through such a system. Judge Fargo was soon taken in by by the authorities, and the two brothers, Joseph and Rico, were sent to the academy for further training. They both emerged as toppers of their class, and by this time, following the events of World War III, the judges assumed complete control of the administration in the country. However, just as they began their career as judges, Joseph found out that his brother Rico was indulging in corrupt practices. Rico wanted him to cover for his crimes because he believed that the judges had the power to kill and loot as they pleased. Joseph stayed true to his duty and arrested his brother, following which Rico was sentenced to 20 years of hard labor on a colony on Saturn's moon, Titan. Meanwhile, Joseph gained quite a reputation as Judge Dredd, a name that was given to him to strike fear among the public. When his brother came back for revenge after serving his term, the encounter between them resulted in Rico's death. Judge Dredd has actively protected Mega City One since then, upholding law and order dutifully. There have been times when he was offered a higher position, but Judge Dredd always chose to be a street judge so that he could serve on a grassroot level. Although the respect for duty in his eyes remained paramount, there were a few occasions where he proved that his devotion to the system was not not blind. Every major comic book story arc featuring Judge Dredd. Considering that the Judge Dredd comic series has been running for over four decades, you can imagine how extensive the story arcs have been over the years. There have been various writers and artists involved in the process, and we've witnessed various versions of the character, although the fundamental characteristics have never been tampered with. 
Judge Dredd deals with the robot uprising. This Judge Dredd story arc titled Robot Wars is the first extended story featuring the character, and it popularized Judge Dredd in a major way. The story starts off as Judge Dredd is called to a robot convention, which is interrupted by a criminal and his rogue robot. This makes Dredd quite concerned about the possibility of a robot uprising, where they decide to take the law into their hands. His concerns are proven right when a carpenter robot named Call Me Kenneth expresses his disgust for humans because they enslaved his kind. After taking down this rogue robot, Dredd realizes that deadlier robots might take the same path, and he requests the Council of Five to destroy every high-grade robot to prevent this from happening. But this request is denied, and robots continue to play a major role in Mega City One. Meanwhile, Call Me Kenneth is repaired and reconstructed by scientists who claim to have fixed the issue with his obedience. It's supposed to be a relief for the public as well in order to prove that such instances were only exceptional. However, things go horribly wrong when a live broadcasting of this repair work sees Call Me Kenneth reactivated and killing the scientists. The robot then calls out to all other robots to rise up in rebellion against the humans. Mega City One is thrown into a great crisis, and several robots go rogue. They end up killing thousands of civilians, and Judge Dredd tries his best to launch a counter-offensive with his task force. Dredd also has the services of his loyal robot, Walter the Wobot, and it guides him to the place where Call Me Kenneth is addressing other robots and guiding them in the rebellion. Dredd tries to pose as a robot to blend into the crowd, but he's spotted bleeding and brought before Call Me Kenneth who decides to turn him into a robot. Dredd is imprisoned, and his trusted robot Walter comes to the rescue as it brings him corrosive acid to break the robotic wrist cuffs. It also informs him about dissent among a few robots regarding Call Me Kenneth's moves. And together with a few of these friendly robots, Dredd manages to reprogram the rebellious robots to become obedient. Meanwhile, he learns that Call Me Kenneth and a few other robots have broken through the defenses of the base of the judges. In order to counter the situation, Dredd makes use of the weather station in Mega City One to strike the opposing robots with lightning to destroy them. Call Me Kenneth is also damaged in the process, and the robot uprising is finally contained. There's a final showdown between Judge Dredd and Call Me Kenneth, where Dredd fires at an oil tanker to trigger a massive explosion that destroys the evil robot permanently. He then awards his loyal associate Walter with freedom, making him the first free robot citizen. But Walter still continues to serve him because of his loyalty. The return of Rico sheds light on his origin story. We wouldn't go into the details of this one because we've already covered it earlier in the video while talking about Judge Dredd's origins and early life. This story arc explores how he grew up with his brother Rico and the dynamics between the two. Even though he had to eventually kill Rico, Dredd remained compassionate and mourned the demise of his corrupt brother. One of the most important takeaways of this particular story arc is the fact that Judge Dredd is a clone created artificially to function as a judge. It makes a lot more sense how he's so perfect in the line of duty. Judge Dredd's stint in Lunar City 1. This story arc offers one of the rare moments when Judge Dredd is seen functioning outside Mega City 1. Lunar City 1 is a human settlement on Earth's moon, which is an extraterrestrial city. It's protected by oxydomes, which are supplied with oxygen by the government, and the lunar colonies, including Lunar City 1, agreed to come under the system of the judges following the atomic wars. Lunar City 1 in particular was founded by metropolises like Mega City 1, Mega City 2, and Texas City as a part of a diplomatic exercise. The governance was divided between the three, with a judge marshal sent every six months to oversee the affairs. However, things started to become problematic when lawlessness crept in and Judge Marshall started dying on the job. Finally, Judge Dredd was appointed Judge Marshall and sent to the troubled lands. He survived many assassination attempts and finally brought the wrongdoer Mooney to justice with the help of a few other judges. Later, he also helped the Lunar team win against another judge, and it helped them gain some territory as well. He later returned to Lunar City 1 for another assignment, and this time he was arrested under fake charges of murder. As it turned out, the murders were done by Dredd zombies cell from the City of the Damned, and Dredd had to take on this nemesis before it went on a killing spree. Judge Dredd's epic adventures across the Cursed Earth. The Cursed Earth storyline are keys to understanding the geography of the dystopian world after the nuclear wars. It shows the vast wasteland surrounding Mega City One, and when crisis knocks on the door, the judges must take the perilous journey through these wastelands called the Cursed Earth. It all starts following the outbreak of a deadly virus in Mega City Two, which is located on the west coast of North America. The virus causes the people to become extremely violent before they die from a painful death, and the scientists of Mega City One manage to come up with a vaccine that could cure the condition. However, it becomes impossible to transport the vaccine to Mega City 2, because the airports there are no longer safe to land. Thus, Judge Dredd and a few other judges are given the responsibility of traveling through the Cursed Earth to deliver the vaccine. The convoy is led by Judge Dredd and has three other judges and several androids. The group is heavily armed, and they have a battle tank along with two special motorbikes. For this mission, Dredd chooses to take an outlaw named Spikes, who happens to be the best motorcyclist in the country. Even though he doesn't care for the mission or 
Judge Dredd. Spikes agrees after the promise of a full pardon for his crimes. The narrative mostly revolves around the bizarre experiences and threats encountered by the group during their travel. They deal with vampire-like robots, mutated rats, deadly mutants who seek to kill normal humans, gang wars, and corrupt judges, among others. The journey spans across 14 days, and during this time, a few members of the party are killed. Judge Dredd also liberates an exploited alien species. Finally, the vaccine reaches Mega City 2. Judge Dredd against tyrannical rule in Mega City 1. It's believed that the 1995 Judge Dredd live-action movie is mildly inspired by this story arc. However, the resemblance is rather limited, and the comic book narrative is far more detailed and engaging than the movie. The events here take place after Judge Dredd gets back from the dead mission across Cursed Earth. However, instead of a grand welcome home for him, he finds himself accused of murdering a journalist. There's a video evidence of the murder as well, and Judge Cal uses his influence in the Council of Five to sentence Judge Dredd to 20 years of penal servitude on Saturn's moon Titan. Meanwhile, Judge Cal had assumed that Chief Judge Goodman will step down from his position because of his support for Dredd. No one's aware that the video evidence has been framed by Judge Cal using robots, and Dredd escapes from his prison transport and goes rogue in order to prove his innocence. With the help of his informer, he does come across his killer robotic double, and after defeating the robot, Dredd is able to clear his name. However, he's yet to find out that Judge Cal is behind the sinister plan. After having failed to remove Chief Judge Goodman from his position, Judge Cal has him killed, but a dying Goodman manages to pass a valuable evidence to Dredd that indicates the involvement of Judge Cal. But just as he's about to go and confront Judge Cal, he's severely injured by an assassin and rescued by his robotic ally, Walter. Judge Cal becomes the chief judge swiftly, and he goes on to pass a series of brutal and strict laws which are extremely repressive. It also becomes clear that Judge Cal is mildly insane, because he appoints his pet goldfish as the deputy chief judge and shows no regard for human life. He is, however, a smart madman, and he knows that he has to get rid of Judge Dredd swiftly. He orders for his execution, and Judge Giant takes the responsibility of killing Dredd. Unknown to Judge Cal, Judge Giant helps Dredd to escape, and he soon becomes a part of a resistance movement led by all the judges opposed to Cal. Meanwhile, Judge Cal is furious about Dredd's escape, and his repressive laws grow worse by the day, with mere disobedience punishable by death. There's growing dissent among the common people as well, and Dredd uses this by broadcasting a plea for all citizens to stop Cal. When the oppressive Judge Cal is cornered by all the opposing judges and hordes of people, he summons the alien mercenaries Clegg, which forces Dredd and the other judges to go back into hiding. The struggle continues for Dredd, and so does the descent into madness for Cal, who now appoints the head of the Clegg mercenaries as deputy chief judge. Finally, just as Judge Cal plans to gas the entire city, Dredd manages to rally the other judges and stops him just in time. The Clegg mercenaries guarding him are killed, and the oppressive regime comes to an end with Cal's death. Judge Dredd is offered the position of the chief judge, but he chooses to remain a street judge, something that he's done quite a few times in his career. Judge Dredd vs. His Greatest Enemy, Judge Death Few enemies have troubled Judge Dredd as much as Judge Death, and there's something unnerving about this character that makes him one of the most terrifying comic book villains of all time. He's been a recurring nemesis for Judge Dredd because he can't be killed permanently, and his first appearance introduces him as the leader of the Dark Judges. He comes from a parallel Earth, where this undead entity believes that life itself is a crime because only the living commits crimes. Judge Death laid waste to his Earth and focused his attention elsewhere. When he finally arrives into the world of Judge Dredd, Dread. The undead menace is taken care of, and his body is destroyed during a confrontation with the judges. However, his spirit remains unharmed and continues to search for a new host. Finally, Judge Dredd's trusted ally, Judge Anderson, with psychic powers, captures his spirit within her mind. She then willingly goes into suspended animation, which means that Judge Death is also locked away, with her mind acting as his prison. However, it does not end here, and the other dark judges manage to free Death. After slaughtering thousands of people, they're finally stopped by Dredd and Anderson working together. The story surrounding Judge Death also dives into his horrid childhood, where his father was a sadistic dentist who enjoyed torturing and killing people. Later in his life, after killing his mother and sister, Judge Death became the monster he is with a little help from two witches called Phobia and Nausea. He has three other Dark Judge allies, Judge Fear, Fire, and Mortis. There's a particularly disturbing story arc featuring Judge Death, where the Dark Judges rule over Mega City One after enslaving all the judges with the help of the Sisters of Death, who are spectral beings. They create a nightmarish city called Necropolis, where 60 million and people lose their lives. Judge Dredd, along with the former Chief Judge Magruder and Anderson, manage to take over the sisters' powers, and finally the city is saved from being a slave to the Dark Judges. The dramatic end to such a ruthless villain is also satisfying to read. This takes place after Judge Death heads into Cursed Earth and uses an abandoned bunker with nuclear weapons to destroy Las Vegas. He fires missiles at Mega City One as well, but the city's anti-missile system prevents its destruction. Meanwhile, the judges fire back at the bunker, which destroys the physical body of Judge Death as his spirit moves to the astral 
astral plane, he's attacked by a man whose family had been previously killed by death. This man opens a pit that leads straight to hell, and the vengeful spirits of everyone Judge Death had killed before drag him to hell. Judge Dredd's stint with the prophesied child. Judge Fay is among the most respected judges in Mega City 1, and on his deathbed, he predicts the existence of Judge Child, who will be a great leader and save Mega City 1 from a disaster in the future. He also states that the child can be recognized from an eagle-shaped birthmark on his forehead. The Chief Judge Griffin takes the prophecy seriously and orders Judge Dredd to locate the whereabouts of this child. Dredd is able to track him down into the cursed earth, and this child named Owen Chrysler is a mutant with the ability to see the future. However, his parents had moved out of Mega City 1 when he was born, and later, they'd been killed by slavers, leaving Owen alone in this harsh world. By the time Dredd reaches his settlement, Owen has been kidnapped by slavers, and he keeps changing hands as Dredd tries to get to him. Finally, after a lot of tracking and fighting different groups in the Cursed Earth, Dredd gets to Judge Child. However, after looking into his eyes, Dredd is convinced that the child is nothing but evil, and he can bring destruction in Mega City 1. Dredd chooses to leave him behind, and returns to the Metropolis alone, and he's determined that the disaster Judge Faye spoke about can be dealt with without Owen's interference. Fairness. Meanwhile, Judge Child is furious about being left behind, and he plans a revenge on Judge Dredd. Judge Child sends out assassins to get Dredd, but the mission fails miserably. Dredd then rains a flurry of missiles on Judge Child's location, where he's killed. We see more of Judge Child when a time machine is created in Mega City 1. Chief Judge Magruder is still wary of Judge Faye's prediction, and he sends Dredd and Anderson to explore the future to ensure that things will be fine. To their horror, Dredd and Anderson discover that Mega City 1 is in ruins in the future, and dead bodies are scattered everywhere. The judges, have been turned into vampires, and Dredd and Anderson barely manage to fight their way out. It's slowly revealed that a powerful mutant is responsible for this catastrophic situation. This mutant is able to change reality, and it's the one who changed all the judges into vampires. As Dredd attempts to reach the mutant, he gets attacked and his eyes are gouged out. He still faces the mutant in the end, and it turns out that the mutant is none other than Judge Child. After being revived and recreated from the dead, Judge Child turned into the deadly mutant with all his memories intact. He still seeks revenge, and he sends a zombie version of Judge Dredd after after him. Dredd and Anderson barely manage to get into the time machine and escape. This event also marks the bionic eyes for Judge Dredd, which is essential after being blinded. Now he's able to see in the dark as well, and he finally goes back in time and kills the mutant before it can grow to become powerful enough. How bad can infighting in Mega City 1 get? For a metropolis in a dystopian world, you might think that infighting and block wars will be trivial issues. However, the Block Mania story arc explores just how dangerous the consequences of such infighting can be. Can the system of the judges and the rigid laws do anything when millions of citizens start losing their minds? It all begins with a fight between Enid Blyton Block and Dan Tanner Block. The violence soon starts to spread uncontrollably, and there's absolute lawlessness all around Mega City 1. Judge Dredd is tasked with bringing things under control, but the battle seems to be impossible to win when millions of out-of-control citizens wreak havoc. Even some of the judges join the chaos, and Dredd realizes that something is seriously wrong, which isn't visible at first glance. It turns out that Orlok, an agent from the Russian counterpart to Mega City 1 called East Meg 1, is behind the conspiracy. He made use of the water system in the metropolis to expose the entire city with polluted water. This was simply a part of a much bigger plan. Orlok is now a Sov operative, and the city has been severely weakened, so that Sov can strike Mega City 1 and begin the Apocalypse War a nuclear war on the metropolis. How do the events of the Apocalypse War affect Mega City 1? Following the events of Block Mania triggered by Orlok, Judge Bulgarin, the leader of the Sov dictatorial regime, unleashes the next stage of the plan. He starts off an all out nuclear attack on Mega City 1, and after the missiles have destroyed much of the city, the ground forces are sent in. These forces are led by a warlord named Kazan, and they're equipped with everything from high end weapons to killer robots. Judge Dredd and a few other survivors engage these forces in guerrilla tactics, and things get worse when Kazan assumes total control control of the soft forces. Chief Judge Griffin is taken prisoner, and after a psychosurgery, he's turned into a propaganda tool for Kazan. Dredd is forced to kill his former leader, and in the process, he's almost killed himself. Looking at the desperate state of affairs, Dredd hatches the ultimate plan, where he creates a team of nine for a suicide mission to end the war permanently. They infiltrate the Sov missile headquarters and use their own nukes against them to wipe out the entire East Meg 1 and its half a billion population. The Sovs in Mega City 1 are dispirited following the disaster, and Kazan is executed by Dredd as a punishment for his crimes. The remaining survivors among the Sovs head for East Meg 2, and Judge Magruder becomes the new chief judge. There's a lot at stake as a nearly destroyed Mega City 1 has to be rebuilt all over again. The consequence of the Apocalypse War, however, is far-reaching, and later in the Days of Chaos storyline, the survivors of the war unleash a biological weapon on Mega City 1, which kills over 87% of the population. 
Judge Dredd's Aussie Adventure. This story arc reintroduces someone who originally cloned Judge Dredd, Morton Judd, one of the ex-members of the Council of Five. He'd attempted a coup in Mega City One, but after his failed attempt, he fled to Australia to escape justice. He remained hidden for the next 40 years, and over these years, he successfully created an army of clones known as the Judder. These clones were brainwashed individuals who saw Morton Judd as their god. Meanwhile, Judge Dredd is sent to Australia to track down a notorious sky surfer, Chopper, who's fled to the land down under. In the course of the mission, Dredd encounters his creator, Morton Judd, and his forces. He destroys their base with a nuclear bomb, and the few Judder who survived the attack are captured before they can cause any more damage. The time when a near-dead Judge Dredd lost his memory. This is one of the rare instances where we get to see Judge Dredd without his traditional uniform. The story is told from the perspective of a young boy named Yasser, who lives in a post-apocalyptic wasteland with his people. He comes across the body of a man who seems to have fatal injuries and is almost dead. His face has been disfigured beyond recognition, but when he shows signs of life, Yasser rushes to get some help for the man. His people care for him diligently, and the man does the impossible by surviving from his condition. However, when he's stable enough to talk, it's discovered that that the man has lost his memory and can't remember his own identity. Yasser calls him the dead man, and when the man decides to head out on his own to find out about himself, Yasser's father hands him a brown overcoat, a hat, and a rifle, which gives him the typical appearance of a character from a western. As the dead man sets out, Yasser and his dog follow him, even after being warned about the dangers. They face numerous threats and attacks, but the unlikely team is able to live through all of that. Meanwhile, they also stumble upon clues that hint to the identity of the dead man. It turns out that the man is none other than Judge Dredd and he'd been attacked by the Sisters of Death after he resigned from the Justice Department in Mega City One. The Sisters of Death forced him into the Acid River and left him for dead, without knowing that he would survive. Suddenly, Yasser and Dredd are attacked by the Sisters of Death once again, and Yasser is left blinded. However, Dredd realizes that the Sisters are merely psionic projections, and they can only harm him if he believes that they can. He prepares himself mentally, and the Sisters fail to hurt him, and he then takes Yasser back home. The little boy has to cope with his blindness, and Dredd is filled with remorse for taking the child along. Judge Dredd heads back to Mega City One to check if the Dark Judges have come for the whole city this time around. As Judge Dredd moves toward Mega City One, he's wondering about the reasons that led him to resign from the forces and retire to Cursed Earth. He remembers that he'd been disillusioned with the system, and he thought that the time was ideal for him to step down as a judge. His younger clone brother Kraken, who used to be a former Judder, was a promising cadet, and Dredd was assessing his performance. However, it was interrupted by the killing of Dredd's former mentor, Morphe, and Dredd was more convinced that he should no longer be a judge. Meanwhile, well, he believed that Kraken still had traces of his Judder mentality, which showed when he was angry. Despite his good performance, Dredd believed that he should not be a judge. He then pardoned all the peaceful protesters that he'd arrested, and he left for Cursed Earth, which led to the entire story arc in the first place. What made Judge Dredd resign? While the readers might be enjoying the exciting and thrilling stories featuring Judge Dredd, it often slips their mind that the setting is actually that of a fascist state. Judge Dredd is nothing but an enforcer in this brutal world, and this particular story arc titled A Letter to Judge Dredd highlights the perils of this world. In order to highlight how bad it is for the ordinary citizens of Mega City One, we're told the story of a man named Sholly. He's a part of a peaceful protest because he believes that Mega City One should be governed democratically. However, the rules of protest in this fascist world are laid out clearly, and the judges crack down on the protesters with great ferocity. Sholly suffers a severe brain injury, and he experiences violent delusions and outbursts for the rest of his life, which even drives him to murder. A little boy named Wenders writes a letter to Judge Dredd, questioning the legitimacy of such a system, and he demands to know what drove the judges to act so harshly on a peaceful protest. Later, the brain-damaged Sholly murders Wenders, and Dredd is moved into thinking about his true purpose. He starts to question the values that he served, and he retires from the force briefly. What led to the Necropolis event in the Judge Dredd universe? We've already spoken about Kraken, who was deemed unfit to be a judge by Dredd because he believed that Kraken was still a Judder at heart. This warranted a death sentence for Kraken, but it was actually a test of his character. Kraken did not try to defend himself and accepted the sentence, which led Chief Judge Silver to make him a judge. Meanwhile, Dredd has already quit the system, and Judge Silver doesn't want the public to get wind of the fact that someone as dutiful and famous as Dredd has lost faith in the system. Thus, he asks Kraken to pose as Dredd so that the public can not aware of the exact situation. On the other hand, a woman named Xena shows increasing signs of obsession regarding Judge Death. It turns out that the Sisters of Death are influencing her from Dead World, and they're convincing her that she'll be the perfect bride for Death. They use her mind as a psychic bridge to manifest themselves on Earth, and briefly two months following the departure of Dread, the Sisters attack Mega City One. They take over Judge Kraken, who's vulnerable, and they use a judge with psychic powers to build a stronger bridge between this world and Dead World. Kraken is completely corrupted by the Sisters, and he strives to bring 
the dark judges back, and the population is systematically slaughtered under this unholy regime. This marks the Necropolis event, which we've covered briefly previously in the video. It takes Judge Dredd and a retired Chief Judge Magruder to team up and defeat the dark forces and free Mega City One. The acting Chief Judge Silver is presumed to be dead, and Magruder takes over as the new leader. However, the saga of Judge Silver is far from over. He'd been murdered by Judge Death and reanimated as a zombie, and following the events of Necropolis, Silver remained hidden for months, fearing prosecution. When he finds out that Magruder has taken over as the Chief Judge, he reclaims his position, stating that he'd never resigned, unlike Magruder, and deserved to regain his seat as the Chief Judge. Dredd rules in his favor, and Judge Silver is back in office. However, when Dredd finds out about his role and incompetence during the Necropolis, he declares Silver to be unfit for command and sentences him to be executed. Despite the repeated pleas of Judge Silver, Dredd incinerates him, and Magruder is reinstated as the Chief Judge once again. A struggle for democracy in Mega City One. One of the biggest conflicts in Mega City One over the years has been the fight against the totalitarian judge system. A large segment of the population believes that democracy should be the way ahead, while there are others who have faith in the judges and their iron fist governance. The conflict has created tension among the people for decades, and finally, an election process takes place in order to determine the fate of Mega City One. Unfortunately, most of the people who want democracy don't turn up for voting, and the ones who do are largely in favor of the judges. This makes the election result in favor of the judges to be in control, and as a consequence of this result, there's a massive pro-democracy march with over two million people. When Judge Dredd interacts with these people and finds out that they're ready to riot, he convinces them about the accuracy and fairness of the referendum. This story arc also shows Judge Dredd going through some physical rejuvenation, especially after the damage that he suffered during a previous attack by the Sisters of Death. His damaged skin and muscle tissues are restored, and he also becomes more youthful through the process. This was clearly a necessity, because we as the readers tend to forget that that Judge Dredd is also aging with time, and something needs to keep his powers intact. The Judge Dredd and Stronium Dog Crossover The first crossover story featuring Judge Dredd and Johnny Alpha from the Stronium Dog starts off with a scenario where Alpha works as a bounty hunter after being mutated under the effect of Stronium radiation after the nuclear war. Johnny Alpha and his partner Wolf head to Judge Dredd's timeline in order to apprehend an escaped convict, and Judge Dredd finds out that they're time travelers on a mission. However, he refuses to acknowledge their authority in delivering justice and deems them as criminals who are breaking the law. A fight ensues between Dredd and Alpha. Finally, both Alpha and his partner are transported back to their timeline along with the fugitive. Judge Dredd regards them as fugitives on the run, and the story also establishes the fact that Alpha and Dredd hail from the same universe, and Johnny Alpha just happens to be from the future. There's another interaction between the two in the Judgment Day story arc, and here Johnny Alpha can be seen trying to ensure that Dredd doesn't alter the future timeline completely through his actions. Meanwhile, a deadly villain named Sabat the Necromagus reanimated millions of dead people outside Mega City One, and the following violence results in the fourth world war. Eventually, Dredd and the other judges decide to nuke the zombie-infested cities, even though it risks wiping out the survivors as well. Billions die in the process, and Dredd, along with Johnny Alpha, take down Sabat in such a way that he can no longer regenerate. His help in the mission makes Dredd pardon Alpha for his previous crimes in Mega City 1. Can robots be judges? Mega City One has been portrayed as an advanced and futuristic city, which uses automation and robots in abundance. But can the robots play a role as the judges, if required? The Mechanismo trilogy finds out the answer to this question, and the disastrous results suggest that being a judge is best left for specially trained humans. The events of Judgment Day and Necropolis have resulted in a large number of fatalities among the judges, and the Justice Department looks for a way to balance the shortage in manpower. Chief Judge Magruder authorizes the building of robot judges who can take over from their human counterparts. The project is conducted in secrecy, and finally, when the first batch of Judge Robots are ready, Dredd is not happy with the idea. His concerns turn out to be genuine when a couple of robots go rogue and end up killing innocent civilians, and these robots are later gunned down by Judge Dredd himself. However, Judge Magruder still pursues the project, and another attempt to bring back the robots end in disaster after another killing spree. The killer robot escapes into the sewers, and Judge Magruder's obsession with the project continues as he employs more robots to track down the escape robot. Dredd and Magruder have a major fallout despite being allies for so long, and Dredd has to take it upon himself to destroy all the troubled robots. His differences with Magruder, however, have greater repercussions in later stories. In the Wilderland storyline, Dredd is arrested after it's proved that he faked evidence in order to destroy the robots. Chief Judge Magruder tries to grab onto her power, and she's still in favor of implementing the Mechanismo project. But Judge Dredd has to take control of the situation once again after a rogue robot attempts to kill Magruder, and the seriousness of the deadly consequences of the project are finally understood. Much later, Harvey tells the story of a new generation of robots that are a significant improvement on the Mechanismo project. These robots are more reliable and they're far more dependable than their predecessors. 
when judges are exiled into the cursed earth by judges gone rogue. The Inferno story arc brings up an interesting situation where a few escaped rogue judges from Titan take over Mega City 1 in an unexpected attack. The judges of Mega City 1 are taken by surprise, and they manage to flee to the cursed earth outside the metropolis premises. It's once again up to their values and struggles as they try to reclaim their city from the Marauders. The Galen DeMarco story. This character is introduced quite late into the journey of Judge Dredd, but she quickly becomes a protagonist of her own comic strip. Judge Galen DeMarco interacts with Dredd when the latter is given the charge of managing an isolated area of the metropolis, which is now a safe haven for corrupt and incompetent judges. Later, another story arc titled The Doomsday Scenario explores how Galen DeMarco is now a mere civilian, and she gets in the way of Crime Lord Nero's ambitions to take over the city. He has an army of robots at his back, and Judge Dredd is also a prisoner for his war crimes during the events of Apocalypse War. He manages to escape just in time to deal with Nero's threat, and it's a story that every Judge Dredd fan needs to check out. Judge Dredd's new family members and old enemies. With time, the creators of Judge Dredd felt the need to expand on his existing story arc. The Blood Cadets, for instance, introduces a young clone of Dredd who goes by the name Rico. His niece, Vienna Pasternak, also makes a comeback, and Dredd finally has a family and the problems associated with it. Many of his old enemies, like his brother Rico Dredd, Judge Cal, and Kazan also make a comeback in the story arc titled Helter Skelter, where Judge Dredd has to fight an invasion from an alternate universe where his enemies ended up as the winners. His extended family also support him in a mission in the Terror and Total War storyline, where the judges are threatened to leave the city unless they want a nuclear explosion conducted by a fanatical group called Total War. The thrilling narrative shows how Judge Dredd deals with the hostage-like situation and brings down the Total War organization. When Judge Dredd fought the Xenomorphs. This lesser-known crossover involves an intriguing plot where a small-time crook dies during a chase and a chestbuster emerges from his chest. Judge Dredd is asked to investigate the matter, and it's soon revealed that the small-time crook named Godber had plans of exploiting the aliens to engage them in illegal pit fighting. Further probes into the matter reveals that the Xenomorphs have spread across the city, and the judges seem to be losing in this war against the aliens. The whole thing turns out to be the work of an evil mastermind, Mr. Bones, who brought the Xenomorphs to the metropolis to get his revenge. A massive Xenomorph hive is ready to burst out into the city, and the judges make use of the abandoned Mechanismo robot judge to repel the xenomorph attacks. Dredd even gets infected during the mission, but finally he's able to trigger a flow of lava into the alien hordes, eliminating them all. The chestbuster inside him is extracted just before it can break out, and the scientists study the organism to prepare for future attacks. Dread against Apartheid. There have been quite a few times when Judge Dredd took an ethical stance, even if it meant going against the prevailing laws of Mega City 1. One such instance was when he campaigned to have the Apartheid laws changed. These laws prohibited mutants from entering the metropolis, and Dredd worked hard for an equal society that stands on acceptance. The rigid Chief Judge Hershey was voted out, and Judge Francisco was the replacement. Later, in the Tour of Duty storyline, Judge Dredd was busy overseeing the foundations of new mutant townships as a part of the new laws that granted more rights to the mutants. During the process, he also brings a notorious mass murderer named PJ Maybe to justice, who is scheming along with a corrupt judge and his dreams of assuming power as the chief judge. Exploring the unforgettable Judge Dredd Batman crossover. There's a crossover story published by DC Comics and Fleetway that deserves your attention. The story reintroduces the terrifying Judge Death, who uses his ability to jump dimensions to end up in Gotham City. In order to get rid of this threat, Batman travels to Judge Dredd's dimension, but he's arrested after being involved in a fight. However, Judge Anderson uses her psychic powers to find out that Batman is on their side, and she helps to go back to Gotham and prevent an unholy alliance between Judge Death and the Scarecrow. Judge Dredd and Batman team up to stop this invincible force, and Judge Death is finally defeated yet again. There's a few other Batman and Judge Dredd crossovers as well, and it's not surprising given how the nature of the two anti-heroes is quite similar despite the thematic differences. The Struggles of a Citizen in a Totalitarian Regime The story arc titled America is another reminder of how brutal the system in Mega City 1 can be under the rigid system established by the judges. The narrative looks into the life of a woman named America who's been against the judges of Mega City 1 for stealing the liberty and happiness from the citizens. The story is told from the perspective of Bennett Beanie, a man who loves her hopelessly. Even though he loves America, he's also scared of the judges and the harsh punishments in place, which prevent him from acting on her ideals. Slowly, Bennett and America 
America drifted apart, and he goes on to become a successful pop star. One night, as he's out looking for some company, he comes across America, who he's shocked to see dressed as a prostitute. He is shocked further when he witnesses her and her group murder a few judges, and for being a witness, Bennett is shot through the throat. Luckily for him, the advanced medical technology in Mega City One allows him to survive. Meanwhile, America arrives to greet him with flowers as an apology. She tells him how the cruelty of the judges forced her into a terrorist organization called Total War. She reveals their plans to blow up the Statue of Liberty, and Bennett rats her out to the judges. He strikes a deal with the judges that America's life will be spared, but the mission under Judge Dredd leaves her with a bullet injury to the head, where she's brain dead. The touching story ends with a classic twist, where we learn that Bennett's brain has been implanted in America's body, and he uses her physical form to sing songs about the people and their dreams. Dread foils a coup. There have been numerous attempts to trigger a coup that would allow a takeover of Mega City One. In the Every Empire Falls storyline, a coup is orchestrated by the chief judge of Texas City, Pamela Oswin, who wishes to take over the metropolis. It's rumored that Dread has been killed in order to weaken the morale of the other judges and the people. And meanwhile, Judge Dread has been kidnapped so that the takeover can take place without his interference. Unfortunately for Pamela, luck runs out on her, and Dread makes sure that the coup attempts fail once he frees himself from his captors. He also takes on some of his old allies like Chief Judge Hershey. When their ideologies crash, and even though he's primarily a protector of Mega City One, he doesn't allow it to embrace extreme fascism that he deems to be unnecessary. How does Judge Dredd deal with the effects of aging? With the stories of Judge Dredd continuing well into the year 2138, or 2016 in the real world, the character was now in his early 70s. Given his work, fitness, and youthful power is a prerequisite for his duty, and Judge Dredd cannot afford to show signs of aging. In order to counter this, the Carousel story arc shows him undergoing rejuvenation treatment. During this process, his entire vascular system, epidermis, and muscle tissues are restructured, and he's turned into a much younger version of himself. We also learn that Judge Dredd has the option of rebuilding building his internal organs and bones as well, which means that the effects of aging will not catch up with the character anytime soon. Judge Dredd's story arc in the cinematic universe explored. As is the case with most popular comic book characters, a live-action adaptation was not too far away for Judge Dredd. The 1995 movie Judge Dredd featured the iconic Sylvester Stallone as the eponymous judge, but it ended up with some very mixed reviews from the fans. The action was too safe and nothing out of the ordinary, even though the movie had its R rating. It was turned into more of a buddy cop comedy, and the over-the-top visuals were not at par with the comic books. That being said, Judge Dredd surely deserved further attempts by film studios, but the next movie came over a decade later. Judge Dredd, 1995. This movie, directed by Danny Cannon, is premised in a futuristic dystopian world after the year 2080. After a major disaster, the Earth has turned into a wasteland, and the survivors have to live in a harsh and brutal environment. Massive megacities house much of the civilization, and the new society has come up with a unique concept to deal with crime. The justice system has been revamped. Now, a core of judges has been assigned a greater role, where they are cops, judge, jury, and executioner packed into one. We're then introduced to one of the most dedicated judges in Mega City One, Joseph Dredd. He's extremely efficient and dutiful, and we see him working alongside a new judge named Barbara Hershey as they end a fierce block war. A hacker named Fergie is caught in the crossfire, and he manages to hide inside a food dispensing robot to avoid getting shot. However, Judge Dredd arrests and sentences him to five years in prison for destroying city properties. Meanwhile, a former judge named Rico manages to escape from prison, and he comes back to Mega City One with plans of his own. Not only does he reclaim his uniform and his gun, but he also reactivates a decommissioned combat robot to serve him. Judge Dredd encounters some trouble in his paradise when a reporter known for being critical of him is murdered, and he's the prime suspect. He faces a trial before a council of judges that includes his former mentor, Chief Justice Fargo. The trial goes against Dredd after traces of his DNA are found on the bullets that killed the journalist. Fargo steps down as Chief Justice in order to spare the life of Judge Dredd, and the latter is sentenced to life imprisonment. Meanwhile, Judge Griffin becomes the new Chief Justice, and it turns out that he's the one who framed Dredd for the murder. He also instructs the escaped convict Rico to spread chaos in the city. Dredd is taken to the Aspen Penal Colony by air, and Fergie is also transported along with him. When their air shuttle is shot down by the savage and cannibalistic Angel Gang, both Dredd and Fergie are taken to a cave. A squad of judges is sent to investigate, and they're ordered by Griffin to shoot dead any survivors. However, Judge Fargo arrives just in time to save Dredd's life, although he gets mortally wounded in the process. Before dying, he tells Dredd that Griffin 
Stefan and Fargo are byproducts of a genetic experiment that was conducted to create the perfect judge. This experimental program has been shut down and Griffin wishes to reactivate the same. Dredd realizes that Rico used their identical DNA to frame him, and he takes it upon himself to set things right. Back in Mega City 1, Rico kills several judges under Griffin's plan, where he wants all future judges from his own DNA. He even gets the genetic experiment project approved by the Council of Judges before killing them all. Meanwhile, Dredd and Fergie team up with Barbara, and they head to the secret location of the project. The combat robot working for Rico captures them, and in a shocking twist, we see that Rico wants to be the leader himself and plans to have Griffin kill as well. The expert hacker Fergie manages to disable the robot, and Dredd engages Rico in a fierce duel. As a last measure, Rico attempts to activate all his clones prematurely, but the plan misfires and the project is destroyed, along with the laboratory. After a dramatic climactic battle, Rico falls to his death from the Statue of Liberty, and Judge Dredd is able to clear his name after the city's supercomputer captures the entire event and broadcasts the information. He's offered the position of the Chief Justice by the other judges, but Dredd decides to remain a street judge who delivers justice for every Every citizen. Dread 2012. Finally, after a series of delays and interruptions, the second movie adaptation was finally ready in 2012. However, due to poor marketing campaigns by the studio, the movie failed to make the commercial impact that it deserved. It was a solid comic book to movie adaptation, but this underappreciated gem had quite a decent storyline as well. This movie takes a more serious tone compared to the first one back in 1995. The story begins in the aftermath of year 2080, when most of the United States has been turned into a wasteland as a consequence of nuclear war. Mega City 1 is a thriving metropolis on the East Coast, and it's home to around 800 million residents. But the city life is plagued by crime and lawlessness, so over 17,000 serious crimes are reported on a daily basis. This makes the harsh justice system a necessity, and this is backed up by the judges who take up the roles of a judge, jury, and executioner together. Judge Dredd is one of them, and he's charged by the chief judge to evaluate a new recruit named Cassandra Anderson. Although she has psychic powers, she failed the aptitude tests marginally, and it remains to be seen if she can be made into a a responsible judge. The movie springs into action as Judge Dredd encounters a fresh problem following the rise of a notorious drug lord, Mama. Judge Dredd is sent along with Anderson to investigate the reports of three men skinned alive, and they enter the 200-story slum tower called Peach Trees. It's revealed that Mama has big plans for a newly introduced drug called Slow Mo, which reduces the user's perception of time to a great extent. After Dredd and Anderson arrest one of Mama's men named Kay, Anderson uses her psychic powers to read his mind. She finds out that he's one of the executioners behind the men skinned alive, and Dredd plans to take him into custody for further questioning. However, Mama uses her forces to take control of the security room in the tower, and they seal the building so that Dredd and Anderson are trapped inside. The drug lord then orders for Dredd and Anderson to be killed, and what follows is an action-packed struggle where the duo has to fight hordes of armed thugs sent by Mama. Dredd and Anderson still manage to call for backup, and she uses her mind-reading powers further to find out more about the slow-mo drug from Kay. It's revealed that Peach Trees is the center of production of this drug, and Dredd wants to pursue Mama even before the backup arrives. Meanwhile, when the backup does arrive, Mama's computer expert is able to deny the entry by faking a security system malfunction. To make matters worse for Dredd and Anderson, the latter is taken hostage by Kay. He takes her to Mama's secret base on the top floor of the building, and while Judge Dredd is in pursuit, the drug lord summons four of the corrupt judges in the system. Dredd takes out two of them, but then he runs out of ammunition and is injured by one of the corrupt judges. Luckily for him, Anderson manages to escape from Kay after her DNA scanning pistol explodes in Kay's hands when he tries to shoot her. She stops the corrupt judge from killing Dredd just in time, and they finally confront Mama together. The drug lord refuses to go down easily, and threatens to blow up the top floors of the building if she's killed, but Dredd forces her to inhale the slow mod drug and throws her down the building to her death. She's unable to trigger the explosives under the influence of the drug, and the movie ends with Judge Dredd evaluating Anderson as eligible for judge duties. She had deemed herself to be insufficient for the role, because she let a criminal disarm her during the mission, but when the chief judge asks for Dredd's opinion, he suggests that she's passed the test. The box office failure of both the movies meant that any attempts to extend the franchise were discouraged, and we sincerely hope that it changes soon, because Judge Dredd is simply too good a character to be restricted to two movies. An unfiltered and brutal movie featuring this dark anti-hero might just give the franchise the spark that it requires.
What makes Judge Dredd an equipped law enforcer? You have to remember that Judge Dredd is not a superhero with incredible superhuman abilities. All he does is courtesy of his years of training and genetic knowledge, but at the same time, the Righteous Judge does have some really cool equipment and weapons that come in handy. One of his primary weapons is the Lawgiver, which is a DNA-coded handgun that can only be used by him. If another person tries to fire his weapon, the incorrect palm print will cause the weapon to explode. The Lawgiver can fire six types of ammo, including armor-piercing, heat-seeking, and standard bullets. Besides this handy weapon, Judge Dredd also carries a scattergun, which is a pump-action shotgun and a boot knife along with his day stick. Judge Dredd usually moves around in a super cool motorbike called the Lawmaster, and it has powerful side-mounted cannons. There's also a centrally mounted laser, and the vehicle is powered by artificial intelligence. The bike's connected to the Justice Department, and messages and information can be sent while Judge Dredd is on the move. He also operates in a special suit, which is basically a black bodysuit equipped with knee and elbow pads. His attire also includes a pair of gloves, shoulder pads, padded boots, and of course, the iconic black and red helmet that covers most of his face. This special helmet also has protective lenses and an inbuilt communicator. Overall, it's safe to say that Judge Dredd carries pretty much everything that he might need to take down the criminals, and it always takes a special effort from the enemy to even pose a challenge for the efficient judge. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on Judge Dredd, and don't forget to tell us which of his comic book story arcs are your favorites. Feel free to demand more such characters and their entire life stories from us, as we'd love to serve you many more of these videos. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Let's move it.